Good morning guys and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. I thought I'd show you a look at my quarantine system. I'm actually running two right now, but this is the one for my tank. I'm running one for my mom's tank as well. Uh, you might be asking yourself, why are your fish in quarantine, Heidi? And I'm going to answer that. And I'm also going to answer what my quarantine process looks like. So uh, this is a 20 gallon long quarantine tank. Ideally, I'd probably have a larger system for that tang and that fox face. Um, but this is the largest quarantine that I had easy access to at the time. And everybody is in here. So why is everybody in here? couple of reasons. Reason number one is my system had ick. Um, so when you are trying to cure ick, you need to take every single fish out of the tank and treat all of them and then leave the tank fishless for four to six weeks, ideally closer to six weeks. Some people even go longer um, so that the ick parasite can starve off in your system and not have a single host. There's no point in quarantining just the sick fish. You need to treat all of them or it's kind of a waste of your time. There's also no reef safe treatment for ick. Um, so that's why you need to treat in a quarantine tank. So I thought I had been very, very careful about making sure that there was no ick in my system. But alas, it got in somehow anyways, probably on the tang, to be honest, this guy right here. Um, I think I moved him out of quarantine too quickly. So um, I took everyone out and I added them back into this tank. They also had the fox face and the tang both also had black ick, which is also known as tang disease. Um, and it looks like someone sprinkled pepper on your fish as opposed to sprinkling salt. And black ick isn't actually ick at all. It is a fluke and it can come off very easily in a fresh water dip um, or you can treat it with praziquantinol. At least I believe that's, you know, as always, I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing the information that I've learned. So, you know, double check. I'm not saying I'm a marine biologist or a vet or anything. But I decided to go ahead and take everyone out Everyone got a fresh water dip, even the ones that weren't showing symptoms. Um, and then everyone went into this quarantine tank and I uh, added old tank water and then um, slowly added RO water to drop the salinity down from uh, 1.00, I'm sorry, 1.020 to 1.009 is what it's sitting at right now. If you want to know a little bit more about hyposalinity, I did a, a more kind of in-depth video about it that you can check out, but there's really only three ways to treat ick. One is copper, um, so people use cupramine, and I didn't have any cupramine on hand, and it's not my favorite because once you add copper to a tank, it uh, destroys the tank forever, basically, and while yes, this is a quarantine tank, I didn't want to risk overdosing it, and I've had hyposalinity work really well for me in the past. So the second way is hyposalinity. And then the third way is something called tank transfer method, which involves switching the fish from tank to tank for uh, every three days tops um, and sterilizing two different tanks every few days. Um, and idea, the idea is you outrun the parasite's life cycle. I was not interested in doing that with all of these fish. So we're just treating with hyposalinity. Everybody got a fresh water dip. Now everybody gets hyposalinity, and the other reason why they are in quarantine, and the much more exciting reason, is that I am upgrading the tank. So I completely broke down the 55 gallon, and I'm upgrading to a 110 six foot tank. And the reason why I'm doing it is actually for those same two fish, the tang and the fox face. Right now they're juveniles. The tang is, is a little on the bigger side. Um, but eventually they do need a six foot tank, especially that tang. So I knew that eventually I would want to upgrade anyways, or I would have to rehome them because I don't believe in keeping fish um, that are too big for your system. I think they're fine. They did fine as juveniles. They were fine in the 55. It was a four foot tank. But eventually, especially that tang is going to need a six foot tank. So when I saw this crazy, crazy deal, it was insane. Um, on a 110 gallon tank and stand. Um, my dad ran over to, the, to uh, the store and picked it up for me in his truck, 
We actually just beat someone else that was there to pick up the same tank by like seven minutes. So it's in my garage right now. I'm so excited about it. I knew I wanted to upgrade. I didn't think I'd be able to upgrade this soon. I've been saving, um, but I'm, I'm just so stoked. So uh, that tank, I am going to go ahead and start everything completely clean on. Oh, hey, there's Lenny. He's been kind of hiding. Um, I'm going to start everything completely clean on. I want to start that tank right, which means including my own personal fish, I am going to treat very thoroughly. I'm going to do thorough, thorough quarantine, not just observing, but prophylactically treating. I know some people are opposed to prophylactic treatment, but um, I definitely would rather be safe than sorry. I want to keep a system that big completely clear of illness. So on top of treating uh, with hyposalinity, I am also going to treat these guys um, with prosequantinol and metronidazole. So a lot of people will use uh, C-chem Metroplex, which I've used in the past, and Prozipro, which are great. Those are great, great treatments. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of the Prozipro. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this guy, API General Cure. This is awesome. It's more popular, it seems, in the freshwater systems. Um, but it does treat salt water as well. It is literally the same ingredients as Prozipro and Metro Metroplex combined. It's Prozyquintal or Prozyquintal? Prozyquintal. I think I'm mispronouncing it. And Metronidazole. Um, and you use it and you treat just the whole tank. And this is a lot easier to get a hold of. You can find them at PetSmarts. It's the only place I've seen them. I haven't seen them at Petco. So my plan is to treat with this as well. And get everyone in here nice and thoroughly taken care of. I'm also going to turn all my live rock back into dry rock to uh, try and make sure that there is no illness on it at all before I add it to the tank. I'm not adding the same substrate. My old tank had crushed coral, which I hate. I wish I had done no substrate at all if, instead of crushed coral. But I have some dry sand that I'm going to be doing this time around so that I can have uh, things like wrasses and certain gobies and that kind of thing. So, a um, little bit about the quarantine tank. It has a lid on it, um, in part because I have a firefish in here which is hiding in this, and I have a neon goby, and those guys will both jump, but literally any fish will jump. So, glass lid is good. It also will help keep down the, um, keep the salinity low. Um, it'll kind of cut down on the evaporation because I don't have an auto top off on here. It's really important when you're doing a hyposalinity treatment that you are checking your salinity very, very, very frequently. I'm probably going to be doing it every day. And don't use a hydrometer, guys. Use a refractometer. This is so cheap. I will link it down below. I have it on, on Amazon. It's like the same price, I think, as a hydrometer, maybe a couple extra bucks. Um, but this can be really well calibrated and you can make sure if you're not really good about making sure that you're keeping the salinity in check, you're not going to be effective at treating it. So um, the lid will help with that, but I'm also going to be checking the salinity daily and making sure that it's topped off with RO water so that we don't have any issues. Um, it has a hang on back filter. This is like an old National Geographic filter that I used to have on a freshwater tank. I took media from my old tank and put it in there since all these fish are infected anyways um i figured let's just go ahead and take that media too while we treat the whole thing so that we, at least we have a nitrogen cycle in here um ideally you would probably want an ammo alert or ammonia alert badge i don't have that so i'll be checking the ammonia very 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 frequently as well um because obviously this isn't the most, uh, <laughs> the best nitrogen cycle going on over here, but it is what it is. Um, I figure it's better to just treat everybody. The other thing I'm not too crazy about with this tank is this. Ideally, I would have more PVC pipe. And the reason for that, it's bare bottom. There's a little bit of sand that I couldn't get rid of, but it's bare bottom. And the reason why most people recommend doing PVC pipe as opposed to something like this is because when it falls off the fish, um, it looks for rough surfaces to reproduce like sand or rock. So that's another reason I don't have live rock in here. Um, and that's where it reproduce, 
reproduces and bursts and goes back into the water column and tries to find hosts. So adding PVC pipe instead of this as a hide, because they do need hides, they'll stress out otherwise, um, is a great way to kind of just reduce the amount of rough surfaces and make it more difficult for the parasite to survive. But since I was adding everyone at once, this is the only PVC pipe that I had at the time. This was just a piece of fake coral that came in on a free tank. I tend to get a lot of free tanks, guys. I hunt Craigslist a lot. Um, this came in on a free tank that I had acquired and I just kind of set it aside. And I added it because I felt like I needed more places for them to hide. And I do think it's helpful. Like you can see the blenny right back there is really, really using it. My firefish is hiding. I hope my firefish is hiding somewhere in there because I haven't seen him all morning. And there is a little gap in the back. So I'm afraid that he might have jumped out, but I see no evidence of him jumping out. And then the, um, the neon goby swims in and out of it too. So I do think that this probably makes them a little bit less stressed having this fake coral, but ideally we would do that. So moving forward, everything that comes in my tank is going to go through a round of hyposalinity, a round of freshwater dips, prosequentanol and metronidazole, not all of this at once, by the way. I may add a copper treatment, oh there's the neon goby. I may add a copper treatment after I raise the salinity just to be extra sure. You can't run both those things at the same time. Don't do that. But um, I really, really, really want to be sure. And then I might also be adding a formalin bath in there to help treat. I believe a formalin will treat uranema and treat brooklynella. I just don't want anything, anything coming into my system that um, might get fish sick with a with a system that big you just can't risk it furthermore I'm probably going to be quarantining coral I've never had coral before in part because I've been afraid of illness coming in for me the fish are the most important thing although I hear people change their mind after they get coral and become obsessed with it but I don't want to just be someone who just dips coral or just throws coral in if I'm gonna do coral I want to have a proper quarantine especially for a tank this size so what has kind of held me back is I don't have a good coral light for a quarantine system. I do, however, have a 10 gallon tank, so I might save up some money and get a coral light so that I can quarantine coral and inverts as well, because they can't be run through meds. And so um, put them in like a good little coral system and leave them in there for six to eight weeks and make sure that they're not coming in with a uh, ick and also uh, treating them with a few coral RX dips to keep out, you know, coral pests as well. So anyways, this video is getting a little bit long. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have a coral quarantine system, I'd love to hear what it looks like. Let me know in the comments. Also, if anyone has any tips for removing, uh, easily re and safely removing black paint from a background, um, I need to do that on my new system. So it's in the garage right now. It'll be a while before it gets set up because I am going to run a fishless cycle on it, but I'd love to hear that in the comments too. Big and new exciting things. I can't wait and I'll keep you updated on how these guys are all doing. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.